coming up in this Brightline Construction Update. This update looks at the activation of the second main line near Sebastian, Florida, stretching from the CP Mico crossover to the CP Winter Beach crossover, along with some of the Brightline test trains. In total, this cutover activated about 10 miles of double track, completing the major track construction in Indian River County. This is not a super drone heavy update, instead being primarily views from the crossings across multiple dates. So if you'd rather skip ahead to the test trains, they begin at about the 13 minute mark. We're starting at Roseland Road, just south of Sebastian River Bridge on March 19th. A portion of the track to the north that was removed last year as part of the Sebastian Bridge work is sitting on the currently out of service Eastern Main. To the south, the track is currently in a temporary alignment due to the bridge work, switching from the West Main back to the existing East Main. Coming back on April 2nd, and there were minimal changes. Now on April 30th, and the track that had been stacked was removed and Eastern Main Line rebuilt. To the south, the temporary alignment was in the process of being removed. I had planned to fly my drone for this, but there was too much wind, so I did the next best thing and came back the next morning, May 1st, for the finished product. We'll start with a quick look at the Sebastian River Bridge. With the removal of the temporary alignment, trains switched to running on the new Eastern Main Line across the bridge for the first time. The west track would be out of service for a couple weeks, providing access for work trains to complete the western main line. This is the last bridge crew on the project, and they are continuing to work to remove the temporary work trestle. On this day, they were actually working to disassemble the second crane, as they were getting to the point where they would not have enough room for both cranes. Now continuing south of the bridge, and you can see the tracks in their now permanent alignment, with the temporary alignment having been removed here. The western main line to the south still required a lot of surfacing work and more ballast. Back on the ground on May 14th, which was the day the cutover occurred, activating the new western main line. Now at Main Street, and the second main line was in the process of being skeletonized on March 19th with one rail on the ties. To the south, the track was constructed and connected to the crossing, but only had some initial ballast placed on the approach. Back on April 30th, and the new main line was fully constructed and had its first drop of ballast and initial lift complete on both sides of the crossing. At Sebastian Boulevard, ties were laid out and the turnout constructed in place for the Western Sebastian team track. To the south, the Western Main Line had not been constructed due to the existing Sebastian team track still being in place. The turnout for the new Eastern Main Line was ready to be installed. April 2nd saw no change to the north. To the south, the old team track had been removed and ties set for the Western Main. The turnout will be installed the following day and would be the final turnout to be installed in the Brevard and Indian River County segment of the project. On April 30th, a crew was installing insulated joints to the north. The track had been ballasted at that point. To the south, the turnout was installed for the new Eastern Sebastian team track and the western main line constructed and ballasted. Continuing a quarter of a mile south to Felsmere Road, 
and the situation was the same as Sebastian Boulevard, but reversed. On March 19th, no ties to the north due to the team track. To the south, ties are set, but no rail on them yet. On April 2nd, track had been skeletonized to the north. To the south, the track was also skeletonized. And on April 30th, ballast was in place, with surfacing work ongoing on both sides of the crossing. Next stop is a mile south at Old Dixie Highway on March 19th. Here's a look at the ties set here for the Western Main Line. This is the only section for this cutover where a road paralleled the tracks on the west side, allowing this view. And now on April 30th, that same view with the Western Main Line finished. Now to the south of Old Dixie Highway on March 19th, and a surfacing set was parked on the western main here. Ballasting and surfacing was being done from the south working north, so the equipment was parked here at the end of the constructed track to be out of the way of the work train dropping ballast elsewhere. My next view here was on May 14th, with the track complete and in service. The piles of ties are for future spot tire placement on the existing eastern main. Now at Schumann Drive, and the track was skeletonized both north and south on March 19th. On April 30th, Holland trucks were on site to assist with the de-stressing operations and flashbud welding nearby. On the track to the south is the vibrator the de-stressing crew uses ready to be taken off the track for the day. De-stressing is the final step in track construction. Now at 99th Street and track was skeletonized. And on April 30th with the track complete. The old intermediate signal here would be removed two weeks later, and the new signals activated then. Barber Street was the same status as the other nearby crossings, being skeletonized on March 19th, then ballasted on April 30th, though surfacing work was still needed to the south. Aquabasso Road on March 19th and ballasting had begun and turnouts were installed for the team tracks on both main lines. Signal crews were working on the future intermediate signals to the south, with surfacing work required south as well. On April 30th, surfacing work was still required north, but was finished to the south. The team track sidings had not been constructed yet, as they were not critical for activating the western main line. Approaching 77th Street and the Western Main was ballasted and partially surfaced on March 19th.
and on April 30th, it was complete. To the south on March 19th, the western main was complete. This was because the local train needed to access this segment south to CP Winter Beach when switching Russell Concrete. Piled up here is the former turnout that had been used to access Russell Concrete from the existing Eastern Main Line prior to the Western Main Line being connected. Here are a few hoppers on the Russell Concrete siding. And here are the CP Winter Beach crossovers. and one more look south on April 30th. And now it is time for some of the test trains. A Brightline train was used for most of the tests, but the testers took advantage of work train AFW2 to perform one of the low speed 10 mile per hour runs between CP Valkyria and CP Gifford, as it headed back south after it had spent the morning dropping ballast in Melbourne. Here it is crossing the Sebastian River Bridge. GP40-2-433 was leading the train of ballast hoppers.
it was moving so slow that I was able to get ahead of it with 15 minutes to spare near C.P. Gifford, about 15 miles south. The Brightline test train had been holding south of C.P. Gifford, waiting for local 920 to finish work nearby and for AFW2 to pass. Once they were both out of the way, it started accelerating north. I was able to make it back to the Sebastian River for its next southbound run after it made it up to C.P. Valkyria and the crew had changed ends of the train. The purpose of these test trains is to ensure the new signal system and crossing protection were working properly at both low speeds and higher speeds. Until these tests were completed, all the crossings and the cutover limits had flaggers in place to stop traffic and extra care was done with dispatching. The cloud of dust behind the train was simply due to the fact there hadn't been any rain since the section of track had been ballasted and surfaced and will disappear after time. Now it's CP Miko, and the test train is crossing the Sebastian Bridge in the distance before making the curve. I am flying ahead of the train here, expecting it to be going faster, when in fact it was coming to a stop to drop off one of the crew members. The test train on this day was SCB-40 locomotives 108 and 103, with two cars from the original bright orange. The other coaches were either in for maintenance were included in the expanded consist of some of the other trains in South Florida. And the last catch is it coming back south through CP Mico. With the completion of this testing, the major work remaining is around Melbourne, with a few other smaller projects around the Fort Pierce yard to complete. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Also check out my social media pages.